Next up is NCCI's Chief Actuary, Donna Glenn, and our exclusive State of the Line report. At the end of today's program, I'd encourage everyone to also access our State of the Line guide as part of our AIS Highlights report, available on NCCI.com. The guide is a companion to Donna's presentation and will provide you with a slide-by-slide -slide analysis of the formulas, key takeaways, and data sources for all of the information she presents today. And now, here is NCCI's Chief Actuary, Donna Glenn. As NCCI's new Chief Actuary, I have both the honor and the pleasure to present our State of the Line to you today. Typically, we focus on last year's results and review them in great detail. Because 2020 has started with such a shock to the system, we are flexing our approach with this year's State of the Line. I'll begin by highlighting how the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting property and casualty industry, and then focus on workers' compensation and how NCCI is responding. And then we'll see the details underlying workers' compensation's strong 2019 results. And I'll wrap up with what we may expect during the rest of 2020 and these uncertain times. So we're four months into 2020, and it's safe to say, personal and commercial lines are trending in different directions. In personal lines, the industry is benefiting from reduced driving mileage so much so that carriers are providing premium credits to insureds for the expected frequency decrease. And homeowners too has benefited from a mild first four months of the year with relatively few winter storms and tornadoes. On the other hand, commercial lines has far more challenges ahead. Pandemics have long been considered an uninsurable risk and they've typically been excluded from coverage. So keeping in mind the intent of current policy language, it's not likely that standard business interruption coverage will provide any relief to businesses. And it's also possible that some businesses could face liability for the spread of the virus. And this could result in general liability and director and officer claims. Legislators are searching for solutions and leaning on insurers to bear some of this burden. And as we all know, workers' compensation is typically the most sensitive to changes in the economic cycle. So we have several unique challenges ahead. And the reality is COVID-19 has shocked the workers' compensation system. The sudden sweeping and complex changes caused by the pandemic have created much uncertainty. Almost overnight, some workers find themselves on the front line while others began telecommuting. With the unique frontline exposures, legislation impacting compensability and presumption of coverage is top of mind. Statistics on infection rates, death rates, hospital capacity, access to care are changing by the day. And at this point, we expect almost every aspect of workers' compensation to be impacted. Nevertheless, the system is strong and designed to support workers and employers. We're all in this together. NCCI, policymakers, regulators, carriers, service providers, agents and brokers, all of us working collaboratively to weather this storm. And I have confidence that together we will rise to the challenge. And as Bill said, vigilance is key and it won't be easy. So let's start with how NCCI is responding. These circumstances are extraordinary, and it's warranted us to consider adjustments to rules and data collection. I direct you to our COVID-19 Resource Center to review the wealth of information and guidance available to you. For example, our Frequently Asked Questions document is updated weekly, and it addresses items such as rule changes and the reclassification of payroll. And you'll also find legislative activity and our quarterly economic briefing series, where we focus on COVID-19's economic considerations. And NCCI recently released a white paper focused on COVID-19's potential loss impacts. And the approach outlined in this paper enables us to build scenarios that assess the potential impacts of various exposure and compensability actions on losses. 
This tool may help policymakers, regulators, and others understand the implications of change and make well-informed decisions. The white paper, it's just a part of what we do at NCCI to evaluate regulatory and legislative changes in workers' compensation. You may find it helpful to better understand this process and learn about some other recent trends that we are currently monitoring. Here's a short video that explains laws and orders. NCCI frequently analyzes the potential system cost impacts of proposed legislation and regulations, as well as changes to the workers' compensation system resulting from court decisions. We do not make policy recommendations. Our role is to objectively evaluate the potential impacts associated with workers' compensation system reform, ranging from targeted changes to comprehensive system rewrites. Policymakers use this information to make informed decisions, and the industry utilizes it to ensure they understand the system cost impacts of such proposed changes. NCCI completes approximately 140 system cost impact analyses each year. Several NCCI data streams are used when assessing the impact of proposed legislation and judicial decisions. Financial call data is used to estimate the share of costs associated with indemnity benefits versus medical expenses. Unit statistical plan data is used to examine indemnity benefits by type of injury. The transactional detail reported in the medical data call is used to determine medical cost distributions and examine payments in relation to maximum reimbursements. In addition, NCCI has begun collecting transactional data with the indemnity data call, which will provide greater insight into workers' compensation indemnity benefits. To supplement this collected data, NCCI also reviews external resources and may gain further insight from system stakeholders. In recent years, some of the more pronounced trends in legislative proposals and judicial decisions have related to benefit levels, marijuana, compensability, and exclusive remedy. Proposals to increase wage replacement benefits have significantly outnumbered proposed benefit reductions. In fact, in 2019, four NCCI states enacted increases to their indemnity benefit levels that required interim loss cost filings to reflect their impact. Legalization of marijuana is an ongoing area of activity at the state and federal levels. Courts have been reviewing marijuana-related issues in workers' compensation and the workplace. Compensability continues to be an active subject across states. Most recently, presumptions related to cancer and mental injuries for first responders have received much attention. Exclusive remedy has seen many broad-based legal challenges over the years. While some litigants have tried to narrow or expand the scope of its application, others have sought to test its constitutionality. Each summer, NCCI's Regulatory and Legislative Trends Report provides an overview of the key legislative and judicial developments based on the most recent legislative session and is available online. NCCI continues to monitor trends in these areas and examine the impact of newly emerging hot topics. Above all, we are committed to remaining the leader in evaluating the potential system cost impacts of legislation and court decisions affecting workers' compensation. We will continue to promptly respond to inquiries regarding COVID-19 and its potential impacts. Now, let's review our 2019 results. And the two themes you will hear are unprecedented financial strength and consistent performance. And the system is well positioned to face the COVID-19 stress. Here you see a long-term history of workers' compensation combined ratios. And for 2019, we had an 85 combined ratio. That 85 is a two-point increase over 2018. So this is a time of unprecedented results. We've had three years in a row with combined ratios under 90. And that 85 translates into a 15-point underwriting gain, significant financial strength. And we also see consistency here with six consecutive years of underwriting gains.
So if we break the combined ratio into its components, you can see that there's been a slight uptick in the most recent year in the bottom two components. Loss ratio is in blue, and the loss adjustment expense ratio is in purple. Even with the small loss ratio increase in 2019, the last few years of loss ratios are the lowest we've seen in at least three decades. Let's look at investment gain on insurance transactions. And this comes from the annual statement insurance expense exhibit, where we separate investment gains into those attributable to insurance transactions and those attributable to capital and surplus. Our preliminary estimate of the 2019 investment gain on insurance transactions is 11%. That is higher than last year's results, but still below the long-term average of 12.6%. And overall, investment returns have been solid when you consider last year's interest rate environment. An 11% investment gain combined with a 15% underwriting gain results in a 26 point operating gain for 2019. And 26 is the largest gain we've seen going back at least 30 years. And to have two consecutive years at this level is remarkable. As the decade came to a close, workers' compensation finished very strong with seven straight years of operating gains greater than 10%. So we've been talking about calendar year results, and they are shown here in blue. And you'll remember that calendar year results include adjustments to reserves on prior accident years. So we add in the accident year results in this view, and they're shown in yellow. We do this to provide a more complete picture of the workers' compensation financial condition over time. And you can see here that the accident year combined ratio as reported in the NAIC annual statement, is 99 for 2019. And it's increased four points from the 2018 accident year combined ratio. This is the first time in 10 years where results for both calendar year and accident year have worsened. Here we bring forward the accident year combined ratios from the previous slide. And you can see them on the right in each two bar pair. And on the left in each group is NCCI's estimate of that year's ultimate accident year combined ratio. In other words, this is the level to which we believe each accident year will develop over time. So NCCI believes accident year 2019 will develop quite favorably, falling by nine points before all claims for that year are settled and closed. And while the magnitude of this expected improvement is sizable, it's comparable to what we also expect to occur for 2018, and to a lesser extent for several years prior to that. And if we remove underwriting expenses and dividends from the values on the previous view, we're left with the loss and loss adjustment expense ratio shown here. And for each accident year, the difference between the selected and the reported accident year values helps us determine an estimate for the reserve position for the workers' compensation industry. And here's a view of that reserve position over time. And it shows total private carrier net loss and loss adjustment expense reserve adequacy. Above the line is a reserve deficiency, and below the line are reserve redundancies. So you can see that reserves held by private carriers as of year end 2019 are $10 billion redundant. That's despite the calendar year reserve releases. This completes our highlights for workers' compensation. Consistently strong financial position like we've seen for the past several years. We will go into more detail into the drivers of these results. But first, let's discuss how workers' compensation fits into the broader property and casualty context. It's important to put workers' comp in context with the other lines of business as not all lines are experiencing the same steady and strong results as we've seen in workers' compensation. And we'll review premium and underwriting results. Let's start with premium. Starting at the bottom, property and casualty net written premium in 2019 is just over $632 billion, an increase of 3.2% over 2018. 
and the growth is fairly consistent across most lines of business. It possibly reflects a firming market across most of PNC. But workers' comp, on the other hand, dropped by nearly 3% last year. And we'll dive deeper into the workers' compensation premium shortly. So what's been going on in the broader PNC market? Let's look at CIAB's market index survey. What's captured on this slide is the premium change experienced by policies renewing in each quarter. We're showing eight quarters from first quarter 2018 through fourth quarter 2019, and it's by line of business. So in blue, you see workers' compensation premium decreases have been very consistent over this time period, ranging from minus two to minus 3%. On the other hand, commercial auto has seen consistent premium increases, and that market has been hard for most of the decade. For general liability and umbrella, we see an acceleration in the premium increases over the past two years. These are included in the prior slide in the other liability category. And premiums have increased substantially in the second half of 2019, and umbrella has reached nearly 15% in the fourth quarter. This is likely to continue into 2020. Now let's take a look at the underwriting results of the property and casualty industry. At the bottom, we see the 2019 overall combined ratio for the PNC industry is 99. It represents no change from the previous year. Across the different lines of business, however, combined ratio changes were a mixed bag. Other liability showed the largest deterioration and perhaps this reflects the premium increases we saw on the last slide. On the other hand, homeowners and fire and allied lines improve significantly. Both are below 100, and Mother Nature has contributed her fair share to these results with lower catastrophe losses in 2019 relative to 2018. As for workers' compensation, we already saw that the combined ratio increased modestly by two points to 85. But within this broader PNC context, we can see that workers' compensation had the strongest underwriting gains of all the property and casualty lines of business. Looking at a long-term view of the property and casualty industry combined ratios, you can see that it's had its ups and downs. And in general, it hovers around the break-even combined ratio of 100. The long-term average is 102. Overall, the PNC industry has produced an underwriting profit in five of the seven most recent years. And it appears that carriers have stressed the role of underwriting. Next, let's peel back the layers to better understand workers' compensation results by looking at the component parts of the loss ratios, premium and losses. And we'll start with premium. This view shows a history of workers' compensation net written premium for the last two decades. And the private carrier premium is shown in blue and the state fund premium is shown in yellow. And as I mentioned, the 2019 net written premium for private carriers is $42 billion. And when state fund premium is added in, the 2019 net written premium total is $47 billion. It's a slight decrease when compared with that for 2018. Now let's take a brief look at the premium in the residual market. We'll review the cyclicality in the residual market premium over time. So premiums grew after 9-11, then declined significantly during the late 2000s, and increased again after the Great Recession. Through the years of strong workers' compensation profitability, the residual market has been very stable, and the volume is an indicator of a healthy workers' compensation system. It signals that risks are continuing to find coverage in the voluntary market. In NCCI service pools, premium has been hovering at about $1 billion over the last several years, and you could see small year-over-year -year declines since 2015. So time will tell. The impacts of COVID-19's deep employment contractions and broad compensability actions could impact the size of the residual market. If we look at residual market share over time, you can see that 2019 is estimated to be approximately 7%. And 
and this is a continuation of the recent decline and its manageable size from a countrywide perspective. Ensuring that the residual market is self-funded remains one of NCCI's core objectives. And to date, all metrics are pointing in a good direction. Now we're switching back to the total workers' compensation market for private carriers to look at direct written premium. Countrywide direct written premium declined slightly between 2018 and 19 with a slight change of minus 2.6%. It's very similar to the change in net written premium. And over the next few slides, we're going to discuss the primary contributors to this decrease, including state differences, payroll levels, and loss cost levels. We'll start with direct written premium changes by state. And you can see here, there's quite a bit of variation. The jurisdictions in shades of blue saw direct written premium increases, and those in orange experienced direct written premium decreases. And it shouldn't be a surprise that most states are in some shade of orange, as generally decreasing loss costs and rate level changes have been approved across the country. Now we'll focus our attention on the NCCI jurisdictions. And at the bottom of this slide, you see the private carrier change in direct written premium was minus 1.3% between 18 and 19. Changes in payroll and other factors only partially offset the downward impact on premium due to the changes in bureau loss costs and mix of business. Let's review the change in payroll on the top line in more detail. You'll notice the change in payroll on this slide is slightly different than the one on the previous slide. And that's because we're now using the detail from Moody's forecasts to help explain the changes in the components of payroll. So changes in payroll can be driven by changes in wages or changes in employment. And both of these increased in 2019. But wages on the left grew at a faster rate than employment on the right. On the left, the white vertical line marks the overall average wage change of 3.7% and there were wage increases across all economic sectors. And on the right, we see employment grew by 1.5% during 2019, with the construction sector leading the way once again this year. The next driver of the overall premium level change is the change in bureau loss cost levels. And this chart shows the impact of approved NCCI rate and loss cost filings on bureau premium level. It's reflected here by effective year. So while the weighted average decrease has been close to 10% for 2018 and 2019, the 2020 average decrease is not as large. It's approximately 7%. And when you look at the most recent round of experience filings by individual jurisdiction, you'll notice there are no increases. In addition, the range of filings became tighter, with fewer states experiencing double-digit decreases in the most recent rate filing season. Now let's turn our attention to drivers of workers' compensation losses, and we'll begin with frequency. Here we see the annual changes in lost time claim frequency over the last two decades. And on the right, in blue, you can see NCCI's preliminary estimate for 2019. The annual change in claim frequency is minus 4%. And this is consistent with the long-term average annual decline of 3.8%. Recall in 2018, we saw a relatively smaller decline in claim frequency. It was approximately 1%. And many were questioning whether that was a signal of a possible cycle turn. And based on these frequency results alone, it doesn't appear that we've reached a turning point. So here's a video that highlights some of the key drivers underlying this long-term decline in claim frequency. Workers' compensation claim frequency is calculated as the number of claims relative to some exposure base. This key metric is a common topic of conversation in workers' compensation circles. For nearly 100 years, the rate of workplace injuries has gradually decreased, 
putting downward pressure on total workers' comp system costs. However, there have been historical periods during which claim frequency changes have broken away from this long-term downward trend. When will the next period of increasing claim frequency occur? Will it be a temporary blip like we saw after the last recession, or a more prolonged, substantial reversal of the long-term downward trend? No one can know for sure, but we can gain insight by considering the factors that have contributed to the long-term claim frequency decline and the short-term breaks in that historical trend. NCCI research has shown that claim frequency has declined over the long term across every major category – gender, age, industry, and type of injury, to name a few. Several factors have contributed to this widespread pattern. Global competition has motivated employers to improve working conditions and productivity, the byproduct of which is safety. Risk management resources have partnered with human resources to create holistic approaches aimed at improving worker safety and overall worker wellness. Risk management is focused on managing the safety of the environment and mitigating hazards, whereas wellness programs target overall worker fitness and illness prevention. Together, these efforts have contributed to improved workers' compensation claim frequency. The format of occupational training programs has also been revised to improve their effectiveness and ensure employee safety. For example, employees who work at heights can utilize virtual reality training to gain experience without the risk. Automation and technological advances have also contributed to the decline in claim frequency. Over time, automation has facilitated a general shift in employment from farming and manufacturing to generally safer service-based industries. Technological advances, including the use of robotics, artificial intelligence, and wearables, have also helped to reduce the number of workplace injuries. Over time, there have been short-term changes to the long-term pattern of declining claim frequency, most commonly during and following recessions. NCCI research has shown that, during recessions, shrinking employment tends to put downward pressure on overall claim frequency as the newer and less experienced workers are most likely to see their hours reduced or eliminated. As the economy recovers, the opposite occurs, and claim frequency tends to rise. Of course, changes in claim frequency vary by individual company due to differences in their books of business, including the types of risks they insure, industry sectors to which they offer coverage, varying underwriting guidelines, and the fortuitous nature of the insurance industry in general. NCCI has and will continue to engage with industry stakeholders to remain a thought leader on this key cost driver in the workers' compensation system. As the video described, frequency has declined over the long term across every major category – gender, age, and industry. Let's explore a few other dimensions in more detail to see if there are any deviations from this overall long-term decline. And here you see the average annual frequency change by nature of injury. This view captures frequency change from 2013 through 2018, and the size of the circle represents the number of lost time claims. So we've highlighted both sprains and strains in blue, and these have had relatively larger average annual declines when compared with the average across all claims, and that's shown in yellow. Together, sprains and strains make up about 40% of all lost time claims. And as you can see, average declines were observed across all nature of injury categories. Now let's look at another dimension. Using the same setup, but drilling down into part of body, we see a common theme of general decline in lost time claim frequency. And on the left, back injuries have seen the largest average decrease in frequency which is almost double the all claims average of minus 3.8%. And this indicates that companies have made great improvements in lifting techniques, enforcing weight limits, and other safety measures to minimize the strain on the upper and lower back. On the right side of the chart, head, brain, and face was the only part of body category to experience an increase in frequency over this same time period with an average increase of 1%. Although this category has a fairly small number of claims, it does include TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, 
These injuries tend to be more severe and can result in permanent impairment. And since it's a departure from the overall decline in frequency, we will continue to monitor these results. As we've shown before, motor vehicle accidents have also deviated from the long-term claim frequency decline, and they continue to do so. The gray line at the bottom of this chart shows a cumulative decline in frequency for all claims, and the blue line shows a cumulative change in frequency for motor vehicle accidents alone. So while the overall claim frequency continues to fall, the difference between it and the cumulative change in frequency for motor vehicle accidents continues to widen. And at the end of 2018, approximately 80% of US adults owned a smartphone, a significant increase from the corresponding 20% figure at the beginning of 2011. Distraction related to these devices may always be a factor in motor vehicle accident frequency. And safety mechanisms like hands-free Bluetooth do not appear to be helping motor vehicle accident frequency. So there are a few departures from the long-term frequency decline that warrant some vigilant monitoring. Moving to claim severity, let's start with indemnity. And this view provides average indemnity claim severities over time. And the percentages at the top of the bars are the average annual changes, and the values in the bars themselves represent the average cost in thousands of dollars. Our preliminary estimate of the 2019 change in indemnity claim severity is an increase of 4% to approximately $25,300. And this 4% is in line with the projected countrywide average wage increase and it's only slightly higher than the prior year's annual change. If we connect the tops of the bars, you see the cumulative change in indemnity severity. It's shown here in blue and it's indexed back to 1999. In yellow, for comparison purposes, you see the cumulative growth in wages over the same time period. So since 1999, indemnity claim severity in NCCI states, increased 85%. And this is almost fully explained by the 78% increase in underlying wages over the same time period. Now let's turn our attention to medical severity on lost time claims. Here we see the average medical claim severity over time and our preliminary estimate of the 2019 change in medical lost time claim severity is an increase of 3% to approximately $29,500. And as we connect the bars again, you see the cumulative change in medical lost time claim severity. This time we're comparing it to medical price inflation, and that's shown in yellow. So our proxy for medical inflation is the personal healthcare chain weighted price index. In NCCI states, Medical loss time severity has grown more than twice as fast as medical price inflation over the last two decades. And much of that growth occurred in the first decade shown. Over the second decade, changes in medical loss time claim severity have more closely tracked the growth in medical care prices. This completes our review of the 2019 results. As a recap, the workers' compensation system has been financially strong in the last six years with an unprecedented duration of profitability. Favorable combined ratios and a strong reserve position indicate that the system is well positioned to face the uncertainty ahead. While we have an abundance of questions and only a few clear answers, let's discuss how COVID-19 may potentially affect the workers' compensation system. And we expect that workers' compensation results will be impacted in 2020 and likely farther into the future. So let's jump in with employment levels. It is very clear that big industry segments are experiencing harsh declines. As you can see on the left, workers in leisure, hospitality, and travel-related industries Think of restaurants, hotels, and cruise lines. 
they're feeling the brunt of the economic downturn. And the same is true for many manufacturers and distributors as customer demand has declined. On the other end of the spectrum, there's strong demand for healthcare for urgent needs. It's tempered by layoffs at some facilities. There's also high demand for grocery workers and home delivery, but many of these new jobs may be temporary. And in the middle, telecommuting has helped stabilize employment in the professional services sector. Make no mistake, the shutdown cuts deep. Since mid-March, we've seen more than 30 million claims for unemployment. The biggest unknowns will be the duration of the shutdown and the resiliency of businesses and sectors to recover. It's clear that such a dramatic drop in employment will push premium volume lower in 2020. Lower employment and fewer available work hours will reduce workers' compensation exposure. Small businesses have been especially hit hard by the pandemic. And given that they typically choose first dollar workers' compensation coverage, we expect workers' comp premium to fall even faster than the overall employment. We also expect to see lots of midterm premium adjustments and negative premium audits to reflect this reduced exposure. On the right, some carriers have suspended policy cancellations and late payment penalties. So this doesn't change premium levels, but it does provide additional timing flexibility to policyholders. Let's consider claim frequency. On the left, we see a couple of reasons why we can expect claim frequency to decline in the near term. With access to care limited, there may be a deferral in the number of claims filed. For example, non-acute injuries may have a delay in reporting since the treatment can be postponed. Higher unemployment levels may also put downward pressure on claim frequency. Employees may choose to work through minor injuries rather than submitting a claim. And on the right, there's potential for increased frequency. Frontline workers are susceptible to contracting COVID-19. Changes in policy on compensability, both broadening and presumptions, are likely to put additional upward pressure on frequency. In the middle of the slide, the impact is less clear. Less driving and more telecommuting may reduce the number of motor vehicle accidents. But with people working remotely, in spaces not designed for work, we may see more ergonomic injuries. Let's consider claims severity for existing workers' compensation claims. On the right are key reasons to expect upward pressure on claim severity. For example, as elective treatments and non-acute care get delayed, it may extend claim durations and put upward pressure on costs. Workers may also find fewer return to work opportunities during the pandemic, and light duty programs may be less available, and these may lengthen the time period for workers' compensation benefits to be paid. On the left, telehealth is being widely used. With reduced expenses associated with a telehealth visit, this may help average claim severity. Let's look at COVID-19 workers' compensation claims. What might they look like? Hard data is extremely limited, but it will become clearer once we see actual claims. At the top left with indemnity, it's reasonable to expect a range from a day or two away from work to significantly more time away weeks or even months. On medical on the right, COVID-19 claims are likely to vary widely in severity. Some may require relatively low cost medical care for mild symptoms. However, severe cases involve extensive treatment plans, including hospital stays, intensive care, and ventilators. And some may even result in the need to manage a lifelong medical condition. It's also possible that claims may involve only a mental component and require temporary or long-term care. 
So over the coming quarters, we will begin to learn more about the characteristics of COVID-19 claims. 2020 has proven to be life-altering for all of us. It's also system-altering for the workers' compensation industry. We must remain vigilant and confident, and we know the workers' compensation system is well-positioned to face uncertainties. Here's what we know. We can expect workers' compensation premiums to fall, and they'll fall significantly as unemployment rises. And we will also see shifts in claim frequency and severity. And there are changing rules and the potential for expanded compensability for this virus could drive up costs significantly. NCCI is monitoring all of these changes and we will remain vigilant and will continuously share our analysis, insights, and guidance. Similar to past years, we are providing all of the materials presented here in our usual state of the line guide. Since this virtual experience is abbreviated, you will find additional information there as well. And you'll also find timely updates on our COVID-19 Resource Center. All of this is conveniently located on ncci.com. Thank you for your interest in our State of the Line discussion today. We are anticipating your questions, so please tune in to our Meet the Expert session later today. Personally, I'm thankful for so much these days. My health, my family, my friends, and being part of NCCI. My team and I are committed to weathering this storm with and on behalf of the workers' compensation system. And I share Bill Donnell's confidence that the workers' compensation system will rise to the challenge created by this pandemic. And it is indeed a challenging moment, but we will fulfill our purpose to support injured workers and all of our stakeholders to ensure a strong, healthy workers' compensation system.